I'm going to show you how to apply Bernoulli's equation and the equation of continuity to the physical situation of a draining tank. So a draining tank is a moving fluid, so the water inside that tank is going to be lowering, and of course the, uh, the water that's coming out of the tank is going to be moving as well. So we can't uh, use the static fluid formulas, they're just not applicable. So we switch to dynamic fluid formulas, which are Bernoulli's equation and the equation of continuity. Now they have some limitations, so they're not good with uh, turbulent flow, um, they're not good with uh, viscous fluids, like we had a container full of syrup or something like that, we, we wouldn't expect this to work. But for, for water, it works uh, pretty well, provided the speeds aren't uh, too ridiculous. Okay, so let's say we've got this tank here. So let's look at the physical situation first, then we'll look at the equations. So here's our tank, and we've got a valve down here at the bottom, and we're going to open it up. Okay, and we want to calculate how fast that fluid comes out. You know, of course, we need some data. I said that, it, that it's water, and we have a height of 1.4 meters. Okay, and to get a precise calculation, we actually need to know how big the valve is here and how uh, how big the container is. So this has to be vented to the atmosphere. Of course, don't do this. If it's not vented to the atmosphere, you'll crush your, uh, crush your tank. So assume this is vented to the atmosphere, and the radius here is equal to 0.34 meters and the radius down here is 2 centimeters. So the radius of your um, of your opening at the bottom 0 0.02 meters. Okay, so um, that's what we know. We know it's full of water. We know the, uh, the two radii and we know the height of the tank. And from that, I'm actually going to be able to calculate using the equations I mentioned. I'm going to be able to calculate how fast the fluid comes out and I'll be able to uh, calculate um, the volume flow rate. So how many cubic meters per second are going to be flowing out of this uh, out of this this hole in the tank? Okay, so the like I said, the two two equations that govern uh, moving fluids, at least a first approximation for simple situations, would be Bernoulli's equation and the equation of continuity. So the equation of continuity says cross sectional area times speed equals cross sectional area times speed. So in this context, it would be the cross-sectional area of the, of the tank, cross-sectional area of the opening in the tank. Okay, so basically how much fluid is flowing this way is also equal to how much fluid is shooting out the, um, shooting out this hole. Okay, I think that's a fairly intuitive equation, not, not too complicated. And then you have Bernoulli's equation, which looks a little like a bit of a mess, but it, it's not too bad. So we have that, and it looks a little bit like conservation of energy. So pressure up here plus density of the fluid times g times height up there plus one half density times speed squared equals and then i just rewrite those things again with a subscript two so that would be we'll call it let me, let me go ahead and give these subscripts r1 r2 just so we know which ones we're talking about so p2 plus density of the fluid times g times the height at the second location one half the density times the speed at the second location. Okay, so this is equation of continuity. The second thing here is the is uh, Bernoulli's equation. So that's a lot. Um, and how are we supposed to solve for for speed here? Well, one thing we can do is rewrite Bernoulli's equation in terms of uh, geometry for this particular case. So I'll go ahead and uh, replace area with pi r squared, and then we'll start grinding out some some algebra. Okay, so instead of cross-sectional area, let's go ahead and throw in pi r squared. So pi cross-sectional area would be pi r squared times its speed and then pi r squared times its speed. Okay. So um, that's just equation of continuity written for a circular cross-sectional area. Okay, so this mess here is a simultaneous equation. So I can uh, solve for whichever one I want. I want to find uh, the speed that it's flying out of here. So, you know, do we need to get out of the way? Is it going to be like a fire hose or, you know, how fast is it going to be? Well, let's, let's calculate and find out. So, a lot of algebra here, um, and, but we can do a few simplifications before, we, uh, before I do that. Uh, so, one is to recognize that this is vented to the atmosphere and this is vented to the atmosphere. So, these go away. Okay, these are the same. So, those disappear. And then this one we can get rid of by 
having a coordinate system where this height is y equals zero. So I'll get rid of that one. So it gets a little bit better. I only have three lumps of terms in Bernoulli's equation instead of six. Okay, and so then what I can do is I can solve uh, solve for uh, solve for v in this equation, and then I can uh, throw that in. Uh, so solve for v1 in this equation, substitute into here, and then solve for v2. So it's a simultaneous equation with uh, with the two unknowns being v1 and v2. Okay, so I'm not going to go over that whole algebra. It's a little bit tedious, but we but what you end up with is this. If we solve, try to solve for v2, we get square root of 2g y1 over 1 minus r2 over r1 raised to the fourth. Okay, so a um, little bit better than uh, this, this mess over here. So we can predict the speed that the water flows out by knowing the height and no, by knowing the, the two radii. And that's exactly, and of course, knowing what planet we're on, and that's the data that, that we started with. Okay, now notice this, um, that this equation, if we get rid of the denominator is square root of 2gy, which looks sort of familiar. Um, it's, you know, speed of something that you that you drop from a certain height. Uh, it's also uh, called Torricelli's equation. So Torricelli's equation works pretty well. Even for this situation, it would work uh, because R2 is... Uh, about a 17th as big as R1, so I get 1 17th raised to the fourth, and I basically get one in the denominator anyway. But I want to show, I want to show you the, the most precise, uh, well, not the most precise, but a, a slightly better version than, uh, than Torricelli's equation. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and throw in numbers and see what we get. So 2 times 9.8 times the height, 1.4. Time one minus the radius ratio. So um, R2 is 0.02, R2 is 0.34, raise that to the fourth, and I find that the speed that the fluid comes out is 5.24 meters per second. And that's actually what you would get if you just did square root of 2g times y, uh, you get 5.24. Maybe a few more digits out, we'd, we'd find a difference, but um, you know, it's it, basically the same answer. Okay. Anyway, um, let's, uh, so we know how fast the fluid comes out. Let's calculate uh, how, what the volume flow rate is. So both of, the, of these are volume flow rates. Okay, so we can uh, calculate uh, that. Let's, let's use this one. So we don't have uh, V1, we have V2. So we'll just, uh, and that, we, the usual symbol is Q, volume flow rate, or delta V over delta T would be pi R squared, which was, 0.02 times 5.24, which is V, and I throw that into my uh, calculator and I get 0 0.00658 cubic meters per second. Okay, that doesn't sound like a lot, uh, but cubic meter is a lot of a lot of fluid. Okay, so that if we converted that to gallons per second, it's 1.8 gallons per second. So quite a bit of fluid is, is coming out here. Every second, we get almost two uh, milk uh, jugs full of uh, water coming out. So it's coming out coming out pretty pretty good. Okay, um, if we wanted, uh, we could certainly solve for v1 in this equ uh, this equation. That would tell us how quickly the the water level is is going down. But that's a that's for another day. Okay, so. Um, that's it for now. So just uh, just remember the first two equations, uh, the equations we started with, Bernoulli's equation and equation of continuity, they're kind of the starting point for uh, fluid dynamics. There's certainly a, a lot more to this. This is an oversimplification because we haven't taken into account uh, a lot of things that, that are that are going on here. But I think we get we get a, a reasonable um, match with uh, with experiment if we were to to poke a hole in a in a water tank like this. Okay. So thanks for watching.